All right, welcome back to Fuck a Socks, the podcast, episode 86. Today on the show, kids and kink need to coexist, according to this Muppet freak. Then, California is trying to pass a bill that would separate kids from their parents if their parents don't affirm their gender transitions. Then, Amazon shut down a homeowner's Amazon services because an Amazon driver claimed he heard a racial remark coming from inside the house. We'll tell you what really happened there. And last but not least... We found the big bad racists that are ruining this country and ruining society for everybody. We'll give you a hint. It may not be what you think. All this and more. It's Fuckus Talks, the podcast, episode 86, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And action speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck the Stocks podcast featuring Richard Bradbury. All right, one for one of the intro as always. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Undertack. Summer is coming and one thing is for sure, no one wants to be wearing disgusting underwear. We all know that, right, Richard? That's why we're happy to be sponsored by Undertack, an America first company. They've supported us for like 30 shows so far. So guys, it's time to get some new underwear. Let's get some from Undertack. Undertack.com is the website. Use code FLECUS20 for 20% off site-wide. This underwear is better than the competition because it's cheaper, it's made with more high-quality products, and it's tested by special forces, and Undertack takes a portion of the profits and donates them to anti-human trafficking organizations, which is very honorable. The founder of Undertack actually sent us a note the other day, and it was literally talking about ceviche and tennis, so Undertack watches the show. They like us. We love them back and appreciate their support. Undertack.com is the website. Use code FLECUS20. Tell them Fleck has sent you. Let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Undertack. For Thank sponsoring. you. We love Undertack. I wear Undertack a lot. Me too. And I used to not. And then they sent me the Undertack. And now I wear Undertack whenever I can. Smart. So, all right. We have a lot to get to today. We have a very important housekeeping. It's a really funny housekeeping. You have, how many pages? We got two. It's only uh, two. Good. Last week was four. Richard got mad about it. <laughs> Um, all right. I have no doppelgangers for you this week. Um, yeah, I got a couple for you. Just a couple quickly because we don't do it anymore. All baseball right. guy. Pro baseball player. Take it. Yep. Good. That looks like But me. then after the game, I think you were belligerent or something. You got arrested. Mm, same guy. Yeah. Look at all these cops around. Yeah, it you. took a lot to take me down. They had to put four cuffs on me. Yeah. <laughs> Daisy chain them together. <laughs> to get my hands around my back. Yep. All right. That's it. You I got, got one for you. Okay. It's this next one right there. You see it? Elvis, thank you very much, dude. Yeah. Uh, back left. Our back left. Yep, there you oh, are. Oh, there. Okay. Well, I you were doing a nice thing for <laughs> me. An Elvis henchman. Mm. All right, we have some uh, big news on the show. Richard Rapoy's birthday is today. Yes, thank you. So happy birthday to Richard Rapoy. Leave an HBD RRB in the comments. Juice the algo. Juice the algo. Tickle the post. Goes a long way. Make sure you like the video. Do that now. Thank you. Leave a comment. Happy birthday, Richard. We love you. You're a great guy. All Thank right. You. Really actual important stuff. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. Richard Ratboy got stung by a bee. By a wasp. <laughs> and his face blew up, and he's looking like fucking Eric Bowling and shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually horrible. Like, I got into an enclosed space with a wasp and he hit me three times. He goes, boom, boom, boom across my body. And he came back and he was like, I think something happened in my face. <laughs> no, that's not what I did. <laughs> Look at it. Look at this. Look at this like is so bad. My lips. Um, and so oh, I haven't been stung yeah. by a wasp in like f maybe since I was a kid and I didn't realize how much their poison could actually get me. Yeah. So I had to go like this with a face like this into a grocery store where I bought Benadryl in a water, and I was like, thank you. That's some, so bad. Some I pronounce you Chuck and Larry shit, or uh, Albert yeah. Brenneman from Hitch yeah. shit. I thought when he came over, and I'm still not sure, I thought he was like a CIA guy with a Richard Rapway mask. Yeah. I'm like, the, what's up, man? The uh, Tom Cruise Mission Impossible with the voice changer. Hey, <laughs> plotting anything? We should saw off some shotguns or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I really for a second, and it's like uh, I don't even know. Still, you look normal now. I'm back. I'm back to normal. But man, it, it, and you know what? My first thought was about that. It's like imagine being like some proto human, like early four thousand years ago. You live in a cave. You get lit up by wasps and you come back and you don't really know what's happening. You're just like, ah, <laughs> like itching everywhere. You just lay down and you go to sleep and you either die or you wake up yeah. and then you're like a little bit better. No, like my ears were like closing. It was, it was tough. So, uh, don't want to do that again. That's dark. Yeah. Yeah. You had some, uh, you got your Brett Bayer on. But look at that face, dude. It's like so funny. And we had to blur out some pictures. We don't want to, uh, yeah. We have a schizo wall here at the Flecka studio. And on the background, as you can see, there was the handcuffs. Those were the handcuffs that are, uh, were used to arrest Sam Britton, the luggage twink. We have, like, our scalps on the wall. We have some cool stuff. But we had to censor some of them because not everyone can see what we have here on the wall. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Also, to prove you're not a CIA asset wearing a Richard Rapway mask, uh -huh. we have to ask you a question that only Richard Rapway would know. Okay. Um, how much do I weigh? Three. <laughs> okay. All right. It's him. It's him. Three. <laughs> Relax. Like, it's it's like. Richard. <laughs> we were just doing a joke. We don't need to say any more. Okay. We um, have to move on. Congrats on your face. You look better. I'm you, back, baby. It looks like you had a botched Botox, though. I know. It feels good. Hey, sometimes you got to be, you got to go through some misery to be thankful for what you got. That's true. So that's a good lesson. Yeah. Um, all right. We had a very important shout out, uh, a high school graduation, uh, Angelina, a fan of the show. She shouted out the podcast. We got to show it. Look at this. And lastly, and lastly, Fleckus Talks, the podcast, ranked the best new podcast of all time. <laughs> we got laughs too. People are clapping. Hey, that's a bounty right there. Bounty paid. She got a ton of merch being sent her way. Thank you for shouting out the show. If you guys have any sort of shout outs like this, we'll always take them and we'll always reward you. Yes. All right. We have to move on. Um, we already said Tickle the Pose, Juice the Algo, right? Yep. yep. All right. New Guinness Book of World Records just dropped. The yeah. Rubik's Cube. This one's a real one. This one's a real one. Well, well this one's real. So they start you with a random cube that's like unsolved. They give you a minute to look at it. Remember it. They should start the time now. No, that's the rules. That's true. And he puts it down, both hands on the mat. Go. Yes! Wow. Look at the reaction. And this guy at the mask, stay back. Hey, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> mask guy, stay back, ruins it. Hey, that's good stuff. These nerds are happy. World record. Hey, that's good. Yeah. That's a real one. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll yeah. accept that. Falling down the most plywood things with your dick from last week? No. Yeah, that one didn't count. Um, okay, that's good. That counts. Moving on. Um, snarf, snarf. We have some snarf, snarf updates. We've got a lot of people who are voting. Uh, if you don't know, Oregon City had a contest, Name Our Garbage Truck. Obviously, everyone in, that's in the Fleckus universe is sending in Snarf, Snarf O'Banion. Or if that's too weird, Rob Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have some people voting on our behalf. That should come back soon. We should be getting the answers to that, uh, like and what the name is going to be soon. Yeah. Make sure if you guys see anything that is help us name this thing or help us pick a name for blah, 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 you send it to us because we need to get that name Snarf Snarf or Rob Smith, and then we'll take a picture of it, and then we'll put it on the schizo wall. Yeah, that would be so big for us. That's He's huge. really he really wants it. So. We need one so bad. That's huge squirts for me. So keep sending those votes in. We really need to hit one of those. Richard Rapway actually had one the other day where he made up Gorlock the Destroyer mm -hmm. and it went super viral and everyone was calling that person from the whatever podcast Gorlock the Destroyer. And then someone made this, which is like an X-Men cover of Gorlock the Destroyer, got it framed going on the wall counts as a cultural scout. Yeah. So congrats, Richard. Happy birthday. Thank you. That's for you. All right. We have to move on. We have a very important housekeeping. We have lots to get to. Um, okay. The woke marketing Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Cracker uh, Barrel just wants to join the fun. Cracker Barrel doing some gay shit. Um, they're, they have an LGBTQ alliance. Bring the front porch to pride. Like we have to interact. Our brand has to interact with pride. 
And like, isn't Cracker Barrel like boomer Christians that go like every day for the the early bird special? Yeah, and it's it's that, and then road trip food. People who are on a road trip. There's oh, there's a Cracker Barrel off the exit, off I twenty. Why would they dabble in this twink shit? No reason. But the reason, obviously, why they would is pictured here. Meet Jennifer Tate, our senior vice president and chief marketing. Just some lady who wants who wants who really falls to the social pressures of the gays. You know. Yeah. I don't want to leave anyone out. Yeah. Uh, we should just do it. It's better safe than sorry. And it's yeah. like the opposite. Yeah. Exactly. Better safe than sorry would just be, hey, let's just keep going on as usual, business as usual. Yeah. And I'm, dude, the more I think about this, like. It, Obviously, the boycotts and stuff have worked on certain things like commodities, like Bud Light, more effectively, uh, like we've discussed in the past. It works less on stuff with like inelastic demand that you need to buy. But um, I, I, th- I think we should start making June the month of like conservatives just kind of like chilling on spending. Like imagine yeah. if it's the month where it's like we don't go out to dinners, we don't do this, we save money and then we build like a shed on our property. We save yeah. money and then we go save up for something that we know doesn't do gay shit. You know what I mean by yeah. that? Like, like, yeah, kind of like an anti-spending month. That's a good idea. So. Where you know June is going to be where everyone does all the gay shit. Just make June the month that you hunker down and just cook it at home. You know, not going to restaurants, not going to Target, not buying beer, and you just keep it one hundred, and then just. Decrease your spending. That's what I'm saying. That's I th- smart. I think that could be the way. Bud Light, obviously, they've been getting smoked. They had a, we talked about this off camera, a real monkey paw situation. Yeah. Where the Bud Light marketing team was like, we don't want to be a frat beer anymore. And I wish I was no longer a frat beer. <laughs> and the monkey paw's like, like okay. snap. <laughs> your sales are gone. <laughs> yeah, everyone hates you. Yeah. You'll never be drinking a frat again. Yep. Um, all right. We have to move on. At the end of this show, like we've been doing every week, we're going to highlight a patriotic right wing business, uh, America first business, people that love America. This week is going to be a veteran owned pool cleaning company in uh, Naples, Florida, Fort, Fort Myers, Fort Myers, Florida. So we're going to be highlighting them at the end of the show. Make sure you stick around for that. All right. We have some really important stuff to get to really quick. You know, Georgia Guidestones. Yeah, they got blown up, right? Yeah, they got blown up, but you know what they were, right? Yeah, like you know? the population needs to be under this. Yeah, it has all random. the rules yeah. and all like the esoteric stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a hole in it, and then if you look through it, you can always see the North Star. No, I didn't know that. Isn't that interesting? But it's gone now, right? I don't know. I don't think they got fully blown up. I think it got fully blown up. I think they just blew up a little bit of it. Okay. But if they did or didn't, when they existed, there's a hole in the Georgia Guidestones, and when you look through it, you can see the North Star at all times, which is crazy, because I thought we were just ripping through space like this. <laughs> okay. All you right. could always see the North Star? <laughs> yes. How yes. come every day the stars are the same? Shouldn't think- we be going like, whoa, like new stars. <laughs> wow, whoa, where are we now? This is chaos. <laughs> we're just ripping through the abyss of nothing. All right. This is where you're going. I, I have no comment. I don't know enough. We see the same stars every day. Is it everything rotating with us? That doesn't ring true. That don't make sense to me. That's fair. There's a lot of sp- good thing we got so much space to rip through. <laughs> we see the same stars every day. I don't get that. Shouldn't we be spinning at a thousand miles an hour? Shouldn't yeah. the water be going off the planet in a second? All right, let's get to. We have really important housekeeping. We can't get bogged down. Um, all right, national park. The National Parks rocks uh, stacking. Yeah, so uh, we've been justified. And I mean, we kind of knew this the whole time, but the Great Smoky Mountain, uh, Great Smoky National Park Service said, don't move rocks. And they have the little uh, rock stack yeah. for the hipsters. And we encourage everyone, if you see the rock stack, to kick it over because it's hippie bullshit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it then says, we picked up a national park. They agree. Yeah, and it said, we're happy to see visitors enjoying streams in Great Smoky Mountain National Park. However, we uh, see damage to aquatic habitat when people move rocks, create dams to channel the stream uh, and build rock cairns like the one above moving rocks damages the blah 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 and the Great Smoky Mountains has a lot of salamanders mm. that river the Tennessee Valley area I think they got a lot of salamanders if you stack up the rocks and they fall they land on a salamander <sighs> it's like a building falling on them exactly so yeah that's good and we I said that just because the hippies were the ones you know people in Birkenstocks are the ones that stack up the rocks and I thought that was hippie bullshit yeah. but apparently there's some science behind it Yep. So that's a big pickup for us. We got a lot of people sending me videos, Fleckus Talks, kicking over rock. So it, it, it was. It ended up being true. Yeah. All right, really quick. I just have a little note here. Another big pickup for me. 
I'm one of 57 people that Barbecue with Big Jake follows on Instagram. That's pretty big. Nice. And then uh, the other day, he posted some seasoning, and, I, and it was Baby Jake's seasoning, and I bought it, and I bought the big one, the $100, like, 20-pack. Mm-hmm. And then I thought it was him because he's Big Jake, but apparently Big Jake and Baby Jake are two different barbecue Jakes. Oh. So I ended up buying just, like, an affiliate code from him, and he probably got a little commission on it, but I thought it was his seasoning, and I was trying to support him. I ended up just buying a different barbecue Jake's uh, supplement or whatever. Yeah. You do that a lot, though. You yeah. don't really read the fine print. You yeah. kind of just order stuff, fire from the hip. Like you yeah. bought a, he bought a cast iron skillet the other day and it comes and it's like this gigantic <laughs> thing that's unusable. It's like this big. It's like a campfire. <laughs> well, I just thing. picked the biggest one. Yeah. And so that's, <laughs> that type of shit happens to him a lot where he doesn't read anything. He doesn't kind of figure it out. It, the thing is like this big. It's unusable. Yeah. And I have like an electric stovetop. It's like. And you could have taken the 30 seconds to figure it out, but you just didn't. So. Click, click, click. Yep. That's how I am. Yep. All right. Another big announcement. Pat Sajak is retiring. Yeah. I was never a big Wheel of Fortune guy. You love I'm Wheel. I'm a Wheel Watcher. Yeah. I have a spin ID. I'm a Wheel Watcher. The time has come. I've decided that our 41st season, which begins in September, will be my last. It's been a wonderful ride, and I'll have more to say in the coming months. Many thanks to you all. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I messaged his daughter, Maggie Sajak, mm-hmm. and I said, hey, are you taking over your dad's position? But she didn't reply to me. Oh, left on red <laughs> or not even red? Didn't even open it. Okay. Didn't even open it. That makes sense. No time for Fleckus, I guess. That's an American great. You know, yeah. Pat Sajak. And um, he's right wing too. He's very based. Cool. Openly. We like that. We really do. And that's what I like. I like people who know when it's time to go. Like Pat, Pat Sajak, just go have fun, you know? Play pickleball, live on the island, you know, do whatever you want. Yeah, you have so much money. Exactly. They're probably going to replace him with like, who? Some lesbian. One of the trannies from Jeopardy. Yeah, some lesbian. That's where we're trending, so. Um, all right, let's move on. There was a meme that was going around. Uh, it's like, pick your drink and gun based on your ideology mm-hmm. and i picked mine john doyle's was the arizona iced tea and that gun so i had two i couldn't really pick one was uh diet coke and a draco mm-hmm. and then the other one was an arnold palmer and a mac 10 nice that's kind of like a fleck is vibe yeah what about you I'd do something dumb, like just to be funny, like a big drink with a big plastic whirly straw and like a bazooka, you know, <laughs> just something that doesn't yeah. even make sense. But that's good. Um, all right. We're moving on. We have some summer tips. So if you guys are involved in any sort of umbrellas or tents or things like this, like the temporary wedding tent, you know, any sort of those things and a storm picks up and then the best idea is everyone to grab a side and weigh it down. Make sure nothing like this happens. You've already lost the battle. Do not weigh it down with yourself. (laughs) Make sure nothing like this is going down. All right, moving on. Trump got arrested by the feds. Yeah, the Trump indictment happened. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, Joe Biden arrests his political opponents. I mean, straight up, right? Yeah. And then everyone says, oh, Putin. Oh, or last week. I can't believe you like Kim Jong-un. He does all these bad things. It's like, it's no different than what's going on here. We're in the banana republic. It's happening. Yeah. And it's been happening. And there's a lot of weak people who are like, oh, yo, don't do the crime. You'll have a chance to prove his innocence. It's like you indicted him. He's he's the number one Republican nominee it's right now. So he's the front bad. runner. And then even worse, Joe Exotic, presidential candidate Joe Exotic says he will not pardon Trump if elected. He didn't pardon me, so I won't pardon him. Come on, Joe. Be the bigger man, Joe. Be the bigger guy, Joe. Have so, some class. I guess when Joe Exotic does fill that 60 point gap and make that jump. He, yeah, we're going to have to beg him for that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, what else do you want to say? It's like, it's kind of crazy. Trump just turned it into a campaign event afterwards. He went to like a uh, cafecito. He went to some Cuban sandwich yeah, place, Versailles. Started, started buying Cuban sandwiches, turned it into a campaign event. Ron DeSantis was nowhere to be found. Zero Where, tweets that day. Where's Rob? I, I don't know. It's like, that's really scummy at the end of the day. And then you have Vivek, Ramswami. Ramswami was there looking to boost we his like him. He's okay. He's okay. Um, 
but at least he's honorable enough to be there. DeSantis is over there waiting in the waiting in the lurch for uh, his main opponent to get beheaded, so then he can come and say, "I'm Ron DeSantis. I eat at the gas station." <laughs> you know, I that's mean, that's interesting. That's because, a scumbag move, right? Yeah. Like, no, no tweets, silence on the day the number one Republican yeah. nominee gets uh, indicted. And he kind of and he knew it was coming, so I kind of think that the rhinos that are in Ron's corner are like. We're going to indict him. That's part of the strategy. Let's just let him go down with these indictments, and then you'll be the obvious, only reasonable second candidate up. Yeah. So it's like he wants to win by Trump losing, not by him winning. Exactly. Which is not good. Yeah. Rob, where is Rob? Couldn't muster a statement. Couldn't couldn't do anything. I guess that's a sign of the times. Yeah. Maybe he's busy. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that's the and end. That's what they said. That's that's what the say someone busy? was like, oh, th- like some John Cardello type was like, oh, he's busy. He's <laughs> signing bills in Florida. He's governing. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. This is like an all hands on deck situation. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So that's the end of housekeeping. So that wasn't so bad. That was a great housekeeping. It was a reasonable housekeeping. There it wasn't go. my favorite because I had to take some things out. But we're <laughs> moving on to. Cringe. Don't let me affect you. You know? We're moving on to cringe of the week. I'm trying not to let you affect me. Moving on to Cringe of the Week. Uh, this week's Cringe of the Week and the whole episode is brought to you by FleckusTalks.com. If you guys are loving the show, you're going to love an extra 30 minutes of bonus land that drops as soon as this episode is done on FleckusTalks.com. We have over, I believe, a 1,000 people that have joined. Make sure you guys join, get the bonus content. And if we get enough people to join... We're going to do this public episode on YouTube two times a week. Yep. Starting probably after July 4th. Yep. After the So break. let's get that going. We need more signups and we get more signups. We're going to do the show twice a week. You'll get bonus land and we'll start doing some mailbag episodes. You're going to get a lot of bonus content. And when you sign up, because we're partnering with the National Pulse, you'll also get exclusive content from Raheem Kassam, really cool editor's notes on all of his articles. And then exclusive content from Steve Bannon as well. Yep. And then do, do you want to mention the Discord that we're going to be in? Or yep. No? We're starting a Discord as well. So the Discord is going to be linked through the National Pulse, the website. So if you sign up for FleckusTalks.com, we're going to have a Discord like chat with all the subscribers so you can join. And I think we're going to probably pick like one day a week where we're, we're really active in it. Yep. Uh, and you can, you know, send the links that you want us to talk about on the show, stuff like that. So it's like kind of a community Exactly. Thing. And if anyone is unsure if they should join Bonus Land or not, and you want to check out a free sample, well, do I have news for you? Here is a free sample from this week's Bonus Land. So back to the uh, new definition of a non-man attracted to a non-man. Mm-hmm. That's the, all a lesbian relationship is. You just got to not be a man. Um, attra- the, the person who was behind this approved the name change or the definition is Paula M. Nira, Paula, and it's a uh, it's a trans, mm. a trans man. And look <laughs> at him, look at him. It's it's Rachel Levine, it's Doctor Levine all over again. Um, and then if you have the Doctor Levines that are popping up in a, every industry, it's such a small percentage of trans people, right? Yeah, that's what everyone says. Oh, everyone's freaking out over point whatever percent of the population. But if you have them popping up in, in the, the military. <laughs> In the Johns Hopkins, the John, military. Johns Hopkins is sixty two thousand dollars a year. Yeah, exactly. For to to learn, to learn this. about a non man dating a non man as a lesbian. But like these trans keep getting elevated to power, and it's completely overperforming how the percentage of trans people. Of course. So like the CEOs and Fortune five hundred companies, like you have all these trans representation. That's how they're getting the agenda across. Like, oh, elevate this person. They're different. Now you're a general. You control nukes. Now we're in a war over Ukraine because the trans person doing the agenda's in. Yeah. Um, That's actually, and we cracked it again. And this, yeah, we did. <laughs> we're cracking a lot. And this is like you elect a squirrel to be president. And then all of a sudden <laughs> he's like, one. nuts. We need nuts for everyone. Every single thing yeah. needs to be nuts. We need them at the airport. We need them in bathrooms. And no stealing anyone's nuts. Everyone acorns. Has- <laughs> I want to see acorns. And it's like, what the fuck did you expect? Like yeah. you let the trans, you let the dude be the woman at Johns Hopkins. So if you liked what you see and you want more show, FleckusTalks.com is the site. Join us today. We are getting off of Patreon and onto our own uncensored platform. Join us there. Let's get into Cringe of the Week. Cringe of the Week. We're going to start with non-trans cringe. Are you ready? Yeah. The Beyonce concert. Let's start there. We have to talk about this one. Yeah. 
Beyonce in Barcelona. Beyonce comes out and says, hello, Barcelona. And let's see how normal people react. Yeah. Barcelona. Ah! He's going like this. It's like, a, <laughs> it's like what a girl does. You got to wire it all backwards. You got it all backwards. All right, you get the point, right? Yeah. So, that. what would make you react? What would make you react like that? Well, a, I'd never do the this part, but Jesus Christ coming to Earth. Yeah, the return of literal God. Yeah, would make me go like, oh, like I've never. But that's what these people do: is they make Beyonce like the liberal women and the homosexuals. They make Beyonce their God. Yeah, and then they have these kind of like. Idolatry, religious moments, religious yeah. like idolatry reactions, and I know for a fact you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> they say they really say you're not supposed to. And this guy, like part of it is this guy doing his little thing. Um, it's like he saw the camera get turned on. And he goes, "All right, I gotta perform. You yeah. know, I gotta go on." But yeah, like an alien, uh, aliens with a beam, I'd might cry in that situation. Watching your whole family murdered. Might cry in that situation, or when you die, but that would be less happy. Yeah, yeah. This is this is your like, life is flashing before your eyes. Yeah, and you're, you're ascending, and you're yeah. like, ah. Oh, when you die, and then you see everyone who like in your family died before you. Yeah, and you're reunited with them, and then Jesus is there. I would be like, ah, like that. I could maybe get the hands flailing for yeah. that. Ooh, uh, I would never do the hands flailing, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know, man. This guy, like. Beyonce says Barcelona, and that's enough. So I don't know. That's Must bad. Imagine there's an emergency. It's like, do you know how to do a tourniquet? This guy's <laughs> arm got blown off, and it's like, ah! Then you get the hands flying, ah! No chance. No chance at all. All right, let's move on. Um, baby Gronk's dad. So Baby Gronk is a Baby Gronk. Um, he's a football player in, like, fifth grade. Uh, he got a full scholarship to a bunch of schools already because he's so good. He's a social media personality. But then he did an interview where everyone kind of realized that his dad's the one pulling the strings. Mm -hmm. So here's a video of the interview that's uncut, and we're going to judge Baby Gronk and his father. Are you him is the real question. Yes. See, I'm going to punch him in. Punch Ask him that in. again, bro. Say, man, what kind of question is that? You see my Instagram. Say that. Ready? Go. All right, go hey, ahead. Baby Gronk, are you him? What kind of question is that? Look at my Instagram. Would you take her to prom someday? <laughs> hey, no, say it again, bro. You gotta say, uh, say, man. Uh, I already DM, I already DM'd her and asked her, and she said yes. <laughs> All right, come on, man. Sit on the mic. Hey, baby Gronk, would you take Livy Dunn to prom? You think? I already DM'd her, and she said yes. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. Well, number one, as a content creator, I can appreciate Baby Gronk's dad. Hit that line again. No, we gotta we gotta run through that again. Redo coverage. Like yeah. ask again. Hit the line. We gotta get the sound bites uninterrupted. Yeah. As a content creator, I can appreciate Baby Gronk's dad. Yeah. He would not be a bad guy to have on set. He could be a producer type. Yeah, exactly. But that being said, there is obviously some bad stuff. This is like people are saying it's like kind of like the same thing as the moms that make their kids trans, but just the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. There's the dads who try to breed athletes. Um, the dad, yeah, the dads try to breed athletes, and the moms who try to turn their boys into daughters. Yeah, but it's not really the same thing because no, when definitely. baby Gronk takes hormones, he's going to become a bigger Gronk. <laughs> when when they have like a trans mom encouraging, you become a girl, and that's bad. So it's like people in the comments are all like, "Oh, this is child abuse," and it's like. It's not child abuse yet. Like, let's yeah. start with the trans kids. That's yeah. child abuse. So, like, if we, we can solve all the trans kids. Yeah, there's that, a spectrum. We have to yeah. work through the trans kids first before we even get close to baby Gronk, Exactly. Right? Let's get all the trans kids back to normal. And then, we, like, you know, in 2030, we can worry about baby Gronk and whatever happened to him. And, yeah, sports dads or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So it's like, those oh, child abuse. This is blah, blah, blah. Mm, let's talk about Megan Fox's kids first. Yeah. So. There's an order of operations here, basically, is what we're trying to say. And uh, this kid, he's kind of become a meme. And it's you, you, it's kind of sad because the dad is helping him become a meme. And, like, he trains him in football. And he's baby Gronk. But it's like, what are your genetics? 
Like, are yeah. you gonna are you gonna be are you gonna be five eleven at the end of this? He might be, and you're not baby Gronk at all, and you you you're just a decent high school player. So that can happen. He, he's setting him up to fail, but I guess I mean with the NIL deals, you can just get paid if you're a big enough brand, which so is it, smart. So it's a hedge. Matter. It's a hedge in yeah. case he doesn't become the Gronk he wanted to be. Yeah, he gets some front end pay. Yeah. So we're not gonna get we're not gonna try to solve this until we solve trans kids and trans girls in sports. And yeah, stuff first. So exactly. Let's so let's get Megan Fox's kids back to normal before we worry about baby ground. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to talk about? Megan yeah, Fox Megan kids? Fox is in a fight with Robbie Starbuck. So yeah. Robbie Starbuck called out Megan Fox a while ago after the picture of her kids with the th- looking like three three sons looking like three girls, right? And Robbie Starbuck said, "I used to live in the same." gated community yeah in calabasas i saw that your kids at the park one time with their babysitter crying saying that their mom was forcing them to wear girls clothes which is like a crazy accusation sounds true but also it's like horrible for what megan fox is doing like that's bad uh yeah that's insane and you know there there's this whole thing and we're going to talk about kids fighting back against pride a little bit later in cringe Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. but there's this whole thing where like all this stuff, like, yeah, you see the media pictures, and it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Like, there are, the kids go to the park, the kids go to play uh, whatever sports or summer camp, and then it's like, why are you dressed like a girl, mm-hmm. you know, from other little kids? So there's, like, tons of, like, side pressure that uh, they have to deal with. It's not just like, no, they're happy, trust me, I'm mom. Yeah, You know exactly. what I mean by that? Yeah, so. exactly. So Megan Fox is pushing these kids into feminine behavior, They were crying about it. Robbie Starbuck mentioned that. And then Megan Fox replied. She basically said, I don't want to give you this attention because you're a clout chaser. But and then she says, irregardless, not a word. Irregardless is not a word Um, of how desperate you may be at any given time to acquire wealth, power, success or fame. Never use children as leverage or social currency. It's like, that's what you're doing. Irony alert. Ding, 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 ding. That's exactly what you're doing, Um, especially under malevolent and erroneous pretense. Malevolent and erroneous. But irregardless, sloppy, sloppy, Uh, exploiting my child's gender identity to gain attention in your political campaign, which he's not campaigning for anything, has put you on the wrong side of the universe. I'm saying exploiting your child's gender identity is exactly what Megan Fox is doing. Yeah. Pot, kettle, black. Um, I've been burned at the stake by insecure, narcissistic, impotent little men like you many times, and yet I'm still here. You fucked with the wrong witch. Which is not good, but also witchcraft has no authority over us. Yeah, witchcraft is nothing; has no authority over Robbie Starbuck or anyone. So don't worry about the witchcraft. But yeah, that's very damning if those accusations are true. And it's like you just you're you dress your kids in a certain way that you want while they're crying, and you just feed them into the buzzsaw of growing up. And you the know? and the babysitter is the one who has to deal with it because he even said it's like, oh, your babysitter was there trying to console them. It wasn't even Megan Fox. Yeah. Make sure they go out in this outfit. Yeah, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna do the blood ritual back at home with Machine Gun Kelly, who's also <laughs> no help with looking like a man. Yeah, you take the kids to the park. Yeah. Well, that's it. Let's move on. Are you ready for the next part? Sure. This next one is my favorite clip. Maybe we'll skip the first like 15 seconds because it is a little slow. But basically, it's a trans singer and then an Aboriginal group of singers. And they had like a combined concert in this like progressive melting pot of like a stupid idea. Uh, And they did a little concert. So. May all of your dreams come true. You are my sister. Now it's time for them to do their part. Yep. And this one guy starts laughing, which is. <laughs> starts laughing. They know how absurd this is. <laughs> Isn't 
kind of you get the point, right? Everybody, yeah. I was I was stuck in it, <laughs> watching deep. It's it's reassuring to us because if you're a progressive person, you would have to go to that and pretend it's good. Exactly, and that would be exhausting. And like, yes, it is a different culture, and yes, you know, you don't have to like what completely shit on it you say okay that's what they do well it's you not acknowledge very good. it yeah well it's trash i it's, mean it's just sticks and then going ah, ah, ah and like i'll i'll discount okay the words maybe it's a language i don't speak so yeah. i'm not going to i'm not going to critique that the sticks and the hitting and then the whole performance with the trans person the trans person had a decent voice yeah and it's a man so with the, the big yeah. sausage fingers playing the piano <laughs> and singing uh, in a deep baritone voice. And then they had the break and then nah, 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 nah. And they hit with the sticks. It's campfire shit. That's crazy. Like that's you do that around the campfire. You get two sticks. You go and ah. sticks. There's no strings. There's no woodwinds. There's yes. no advancement. It's just sticks together. But which the, always existed. Yeah. But the main point is. Progressive have to act like that's really good. Yeah. Or something. They have to pretend that this is like some, worth worth a concert hall. Wow. And then yeah. everyone has to sit there and go, oh. And then I didn't know that. The, the Aboriginal people are laughing because yeah. they know it's retarded. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's one of my favorite clips maybe from the whole show. Yeah. And it, this is also why I encourage everyone to make your delusions a reality because if you don't, someone else will. And it's going to be way less capable, way less impressive people doing it. So it's like if you don't put your delusions and make them reality and make your will into reality, someone else is going to and they have way less to offer than you do. Yeah. So make sure you guys. But I would 100 percent go to that as like an event. Imagine yeah. going on a date. It's like the Sydney Opera House or something yeah, to yeah, see that. Yeah. That would be like, like a real venue. That would be like a top 10 date night yeah. a dinner. And then we have a special show. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you'll be surprised. You're going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, that was great. Yeah. That's and, really and, special. I mean, and that's the main point is like progressives or people who are like supposed cultural connoisseurs and critics who want to learn about the world. They have to sit there and go, hmm. Oh, this good. is good. Mm, that is was good. Impressive. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on. The Amazon, um, Amazon shut down a person's house. Yeah, so uh, basically a delivery driver for Amazon misheard an automated doorbell, like a message, like, thank you for coming, or w how can I help you? It was some mm -hmm. sort of phrase like that. He misheard it for racism and reported it to Amazon. Nobody was home. Amazon turned off all the lights, shut down the entire smart home, which is just like the pieces that Amazon controlled, like that were echo controlled. I don't want to make this dramatic, like somebody got locked out of their house. And the water was turned but off. But the lights were off. Yeah. The voice command, the Alexa stuff was all down. Yep. Uh, so they shut that down before it's even started its investigation. Uh, and this guy says law enforcement via corporation with no process, no due process. Yeah. So basically there was an accusation made by the driver saying that he heard a racial remark from inside the house. Amazon heard that. That was enough for them to shut down all their Amazon products within the house. Locked the account. Just no. Locked just the said account. Racism. Lock it. No due process or anything. And then it turns out the homeowner was black. Homeowner was a black man. Yeah. And the homeowner wasn't even home. Yep. So it wasn't what they said. But they just took that info. It was enough. The accusation was enough to just shut everything down. And everyone kind of makes the joke like, oh, in the future, in the cryptocracy, the, you know, everyone's going to get their Teslas shut off because they didn't get the vaccine. It's actually way easier. <laughs> it's not yeah. even that. You don't have to even do something that serious. All you have to do is just get accused by a, a minimum wage worker that, oh, I heard something. That's enough for them to shut everything down. Yeah, the guy who's dropping off your literal package. Um, and the automated response was, excuse me, can I help you? Like in a robot voice, like from like, the doorbell. <laughs> Why did you like, say <laughs> um, And then it's, it's interesting because the guy who wrote this article, right, um, it was like his own op-ed from his experience, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and he says, let me be clear. I fully support Amazon taking measures to ensure the safety of their drivers. However, I question blah, 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 like what their response. And it's like the safety of their drivers. It's like, we're still talking about words here, right? Like you didn't have a booby trap at home That's sponsored by point. Amazon Echo. It's you like, didn't have yeah. a spike, an Indiana Jones thing. I'm going to say it. You, sh you, even if you heard them saying the N word, N word, N word, N word. You just nobody was the, unsafe. You drop the package off yeah. and you walk away. <laughs> and, and like, we're not saying obviously. Maybe we're shooting a sketch. 
But it's like th- that whole thing where you're like writing this article. Oh, you know, they, you, they do have the right to ensure the safety of their drivers. It's like words, guys. They're words. And it was actually, you misheard it. So just mm. clown world, Operation Clown World here. And everyone assumes the worst. Yeah, of course. Everyone assumes the worst. And if you assume the worst everywhere you look, you'll find it. If yeah. you think the world's out to get you, you'll find evidence of that. And this guy goes, like, he, he, he continues the article, due to this experience, I am seriously considering discontinuing my use of the Amazon Echo devices. Oh, I'm seriously considering it. Not After, yet. Not yet. I still <laughs> didn't cross the line. So it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, they need to shut his bank accounts down. And now it'll be the line. All right, let's move on. Um, The lady at the Tony Awards called Ron DeSantis a KKK member. This was embarrassing. Hi. Hi, I'm Danae Benton, actor, (laughs) thank you, and proud CMU alum. Earlier tonight... CMU and the Tony Awards presented the 2023 Excellence in Theater Education Award. And while I am certain that the current Grand Wizard, I'm sorry, excuse me, governor of my home state of Florida, will be changing. Everyone goes crazy. And it's like, you called Ron DeSantis the Grand Wizard of the KKK? So, like, any insult between zero and Grand Wizard is acceptable? Yeah. And it's because he's white, he's KKK? So it's like, for her... It's like, oh, did you steal that dress? <laughs> Are you going to, hey, no yelling in the theater. Does that a, give a Glock with a switch in your pocket? Just whatever accusation <laughs> you can do, because that, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not based on reality. So, yeah. Yeah. Just so, racial swipes at people. Yeah. No, please don't fight and pull someone's weave out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Because yeah. that's allowed, because you can just make an assumption based on someone's race and then the worst things that happen to people who are in that race and what they do yep you can just blanket label generalize that's what she did exactly we're just following her lead yeah and also um thank you for not making me hit any of those lines <laughs> by the way um but yeah and also like the whole thing like she comes up and says she's an actor so you know she's got a grudge mm-hmm. they don't they they don't like actress anymore yeah they don't like anything gendered so if uh, she calls herself an actor, she's going to accuse you of major racism, guys. Just remember that. Yeah, and also remember this when people who want to vote for Ron DeSantis because Ron De- Rob DeSantis is you know way less baggage than Trump, they're going to just say the same thing to, to Ron DeSantis about Trump. Exactly. He's KKK, he's a Nazi. They'll do that. They don't care. It does not matter. And, you know, obviously those words don't matter to us anymore. Mm-hmm. Nazi, racist, bigot, whatever. It's like, no, we don't care anymore. You guys overdid it, right? Yeah. But they will use that for Ron DeSantis. CNN, MSNBC will be preaching, uh, you know, a few levels under Grand Wizard, but they're going to be preaching it nonetheless. Yeah. All right, let's move on. The lady who says the other ways of saying the N-word. Yeah, let's continue on this vein, right? Ten ways you say the N-word without saying the N-word. If you use any of these terms or phrases in reference to black people, you are just as racist as the person that actually uses the N-word. Here are the words. Thug, ghetto, welfare queen, lazy, race baiter, race grifter, threatening, angry, dangerous. Or you say that we're playing the victim or we are a diversity hire. What you actually mean to say is the N-word. Just stop it. If you say these words or phrases, you are calling us the N-word. If you say these ignorant racist terms or phrases around your children, you're also teaching your children to be racist just like you. So I have good news and bad news for you. Here's the bad news. You're not as non-racist as you thought you were, and you're certainly not anti-racist. Here's the good news. You can unlearn all the racist crap you've been taught and reject white supremacist ideologies that you've believed for your entire life. Now, if you're ready to do that and start becoming a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem, go to that link on my profile, sign up for my webinar replay. Buy my course. Be my (laughs) five-day challenge because it's time. After all that, so hey, you really shouldn't say race grifter. Sign up for my webinar, and I'm going to tell you why you're really just saying the N word. Oh my God! Can't say race grifter. That's convenient for her. That's very convenient. And then also, it's actually by design. Yeah, it's perfectly by design. It's perfect. Where well, it seems like this person is grifting off a race. Nah, I'm not allowed to say that. Uh, I I don't. I want to be anti-racist. I need to unlearn some shit. Yeah. Uh, and then also you can't say thug and you can't say lazy and you can't say ghetto. But it's like, has there never been a black thug? 
has never been a lazy black person. Yeah. You get a hundred uh, black people in a room. Someone is the laziest, right? No. Just by definition, by degree, right? There's someone who's the, the hardest worker and someone who's the laziest, no, right? That, that's actually your racism. It's just they're scholars. Oh, my God. And that, you're just assuming them they're not because you probably have racist parents, that yeah. taught you. Yeah, you're right. So it's your whole lineage that's the problem. You're right. Who should I ever make the checkout to? <laughs> yeah. I need you to come uh, speak to my small business. Yeah, exactly. This is a type of 2500 for one day? Okay, I'll sign the check. And then like Microsoft will have her come for a whole day and probably pay fifty grand. Oh yeah, some stupid thing. Yeah. And then it's weird because it's like there are black people that are thugs, right? Of course. And but, the ghetto is a real thing, right? And it's like you can't notice a negative trait about a black person because they say that's racism. Mm -hmm. But it's like we live in New Orleans. There's plenty of black thugs here. Yes. They're all over. I've seen them on video. They shoot like this. Yeah. They got guns with the, the drum. It's a Glock with the drum. Yeah. So, you, but you noticing that is racism. And it's like, you actually can't ever have a negative. You can't attribute anything negative to that whole community or else that's racism. Isn't that like the most sensitive group ever then? Yeah. Where it's like, you can't, you can't correct. You can't criticize. You can't say, Hey, these six, this group of 16 year olds with the, with the automatic Glocks. Kind of thuggish. It's yeah. Like, mm, that's your white privilege. Exactly. You're, parent, you're not anti-racist, so Chinese finger trapped you. Sign up yeah. for my course. Can you say a, uh, a sentence that has all the words she said? I can try. Uh, what did she say? Um, uh, the welfare queen was tired of her lazy thug boyfriend and wanted to leave the ghetto, so she broke up with him. <laughs> You just said N 10 times. I just said the N word, I guess, <laughs> six times, according to this woman who needs money, who wants your money, I guess. All right, let's move on. Let's get into trans cringe. Okay. Uh, the kids in kink can coexist woman. There she yeah, is. Yeah, let's see her or him. I want to clarify this for a second here. I'm not saying that kink isn't kid friendly. I'm saying that kids and kink can coexist at Pride in a totally fine way. There's a nuance here. Mm. That making an event kid friendly doesn't mean sanitizing it, aka taking something like kink out of pride. Making pride kid friendly is not the same thing as sanitizing pride. Making a pride event kid friendly, or I, I prefer kid safe, is about making sure we're including and putting kid and youth voices and including them in pride and particularly any justice spaces. Kids and youth voices are vital to justice movements because they are a vulnerable and marginalized group on their own, which includes their intersecting identities. How dare Florida try and stop that? I know. Just let them, let those tsunami fall <laughs> over you. Kink and kids can coexist. It's like this is, I'm not a I'm not an anti free speech person, but it's like you're getting on you're getting close to you're on thin ice <laughs> jail with no with no, no bail no bail and no trial straight to jail yeah and then there's also a, a fellow content creator out there named Owen B we're not going to give away who it is okay but he's a, I like to consider him a friend of the show or a friend of mine yeah even though he probably doesn't like me as much as I like him. But I do like him. Hey, sometimes that's how it goes, you know? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> likes someone more, right? Well, I don't think he watches the show and he probably sure. just thinks I'm like a right wing whatever. But I, I think he doesn't realize that him and I are on the same page more than uh, maybe people would let on. Um, but he made a great point where it's like, you know how uh, the abortion argument, it's always like no uterus, no opinion. Mm -hmm. And then for the black argument or any issues with the black community it's like only black people can talk about black issues of course and then for some reason childless homosexuals are dictating what's being taught to the kids in school yeah so it's like doesn't that not work in your guys's own like rationalization process yeah you guys can't make kids but you're trying to uh tell us tell how her, we yeah. should handle kids and kink yeah <laughs> Exactly. And it's like you have like these rules, no uterus, no opinion, oh, black voices, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, and then the, the childless gays, they'll tell us what the kids should learn about sexual wise. Yeah. Sexuality yeah no, wise. and that's obviously a psyop. Any white person can have an opinion on a black issue. Any black person, obviously, they have opinions on white people. Oh, you know? of course. We see them all the time on MSNBC in the headlines. Um, so yeah, don't fall for that. You can have an opinion on anything. You don't need personal experience to know that that's fucked up. You know what I mean? Exactly. So don't let that, you know, oh, ab abortion, no uterus, no opinion. It's like, eh, 
I'm in the debate. Yeah. I'm a voter, you know, so. Exactly. All right. The kids rejecting the LGBT indoctrination. Also, before we move on, I just want to say that lady doing the kids in kink video. If you watch that video closely, she has like seven cuts. Uh, so she got to say exactly what she wanted. And that's what she came up with. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was some editing. She edited that. And like, that was still her final message. It wasn't message. 2 a.m. on a live stream. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, yep. It wasn't, it wasn't an out of context thing. She edited it very carefully and then still posted that about kids and kink. Knew exactly what she was saying. All right. Moving on. The kids reject the LGBT indoctrination in the math class. Yeah. So this is kind of what we mentioned earlier. These kids are, there's a piece of this that uh, people didn't. Uh, expect to happen where kids themselves, you know, usually it's all been like this battle from the PTA moms and the school board and whatever, but we forgot about the kids themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, Kids tend to go against what their parents say or what the school wants, the man, you know, every once in a while. Yeah. So here's this, this is, uh, this was a math class, Edison high school in Huntington beach, California. And just listen to what some of the kids and the reaction to being this shown. This is a math class. Yeah. Y equals MX plus B. But they're showing this instead. They're showing so. gay kissing. If you guys are being inappropriate while I play the gay sex video in, in math class. The lesbians making out, you're going to have to come to school on Saturday if you don't open your eyes like a clockwork orange. <laughs> yeah. You need to watch this stuff. It's really important. But look at those kids' initial reactions. Boo! Ugh! Like, yeah. nobody wants to see this shit. Nobody cares. And they threaten them for being inappropriate. Which is like so ironic. Um, and then in the same vein, a Massachusetts middle school uh, had school students tear down rainbow decorations and chant that their pronouns are USA during pride celebration. Officials slam intolerance and homophobia. Yeah. So good. like the kids are fighting back. Um, it, it feels good. Yeah. You know, you, you forget that like you need you kind of need like willing participants to do the brutal propaganda. You know what I mean? And they're trying to do this socialism light thing Mm -hmm. where they force all the gay propaganda on kids, students without mom's consent, without anything. But they don't the parameters aren't really there to really enforce it. Like there's no real Chinese vans pulling around and re-educating you if you don't. Yeah, yeah. So like they're trying it, the light version, um, and kids are fighting back. There's still hope that we can break out of it. Of course. It's not just uh we're not like fully authoritarian yet. Of course. It's close. And then, but they're, yeah, it is close and they are trying to make that happen where they're passing bills, Bill AB 957 in California. Yeah. Where it's basically if your kid uh, says they're trans and the parents don't listen, then they can get taken from the parents. Let's let that play. Many TGI children are not safe in their own homes because of a non informing or abusive caretaker. This leaves many TGI youth to run away from home, leaving them vulnerable to housing, instability, expectation, and abuse. Research demonstrates that family acceptance of LGBTQ plus youth is a crucial protective factor, a crucial, crucial protective factor in combating depression and substance abuse. Well-rounded social support from friends and family members is strongly associated with the positive mental development, physical health, and overall well-being. AB 957 so, yeah, centered the health and bald, welfare black of TGI youth by acknowledging Wonder what her politics are. Basically, the opposite of whatever their, our politics this. are. And it's interesting that they think that a troubled child who is confused about their gender would be better off being removed from their parents, put into foster care, and then given hormones. Pumped full of hormones in foster care. Doesn't that sound like a recipe for a worse disaster? That sounds like a movie where the beginning is that, and then that's their dark backstory, and then they eventually overcome it, you know? Yeah. And, and then, it's like a bad it's like a bad parent who runs the foster care because he gets 600 bucks per kid, and he has 18 rooms, and all the kids basically fend for themselves and beat each other up and shit. Isn't There's sexual assault. Yeah, yeah. So they think the kids are better off going to foster care on the opposite gender hormones than being left with their parents who don't agree. And then also- Waiting it out until they're 18. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if you still want to, I guess you can now. 
And a, and a stat that a lot of people ignore is I believe it's close to 90% of people who identify as youth uh, transgenders end up growing out of it by the time they're done with puberty. So it's like, well, isn't that it right there? Yeah. And then the ones that don't um, and the ones that stay trans – and then they get gender reaffirming surgery or gender affirming hormones. Mm -hmm. Their suicide rate after their procedures is still around the same. So it's not like you're making them happier and now they can go live their life. They're still unhappy and still mentally unwell. Clinically. And then the ones that around. transition out, it's like a, a huge majority of people have transitioned out and grow out of it. Yeah. So I don't understand how California can justify uh, there was an attempt to do the same thing in Louisiana, but the bill did not pass here in Louisiana. Here's what that freak show looked like. Yeah, let's see who they rolled through the, the PA yeah. system. We need some good representation. Like I said, I am Maxwell. I am trans. I am big gay baby. My pronouns are they, them. What are yours? You know nothing of my name. That will sign that they were yes, will be. Yes, Please. This bill will directly impact children and cause them suicidality. This, suicidality. The blood of ch trans youth will be on your hands. I actually finished at Tulane University with a master's degree with a 4.0. Here today to represent the teachers who are not scared of you. Nicknames for some, but not all, is blatant discrimination, and you know it. I will say gay. As amended favorably to the House floor by a seven to five vote. Is it? Is it? Appreciate your time, committee. Uh, do I have a. They always say, like, oh, the blood's on your hands. Like, well, then don't kill yourself. I don't know what, you. what. What are you talking about exactly there? You're threatening to kill yourself if a law gets passed right now. Okay. Yeah. So just don't kill yourself. Also, suicidality. What is that? <laughs> There's just suicide or not, right? Are yeah, we, are and we, those are the representatives. So those are the people that everyone in society needs to listen to because they have it figured out. They probably never had a real job in their life. The one girl has a 4.0 from Tulane. Yeah. I wonder what she majored in. wonder what her professors looked like. Yeah. David Hogg went to Harvard. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean anything. Yep. Um, and we talk about this in the show a lot where it's like these are problems that people have when they get too far away from how the food is made. Exactly. They start using a lot of words to describe like just something normal, right? Yeah. They're, it starts and they they have a little idea, a little kernel, and then they start building words around it. Yeah. Words, 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 words. And it's like, and then research, research, research. And then data proves and then this and then that. And then you make up like this like fan fiction of what you want society to be. And then anything that's not exactly how you want it is oppression. And there's the oppression you heard about. And that's yep. why life is not hard. Yep. But it's like a lot of these problems are just completely made up. And we even see that with depression, too. A lot of people, like the trans people, a lot of them are depressed. And it's because they just don't have a purpose in their life. And they... They're bored. They're bored. And back in the day, they would have like, a, oh, I need to work in the field from sunup to sundown. And then I lay down and then I go wake up at 4 a.m. and do it again. You didn't have time to become a transgender. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and, you know, we're not saying that's necessarily better, but... Yeah, it is. Kind it of. is. There's a Cernovich tweet that kind of summed it up. Yeah. Uh, Cernovich goes, when young guys with no kids would tell me they're depressed, I always told them, go live on the streets for a while. None did it. Point being, not depressed. They were simultaneously comfortable and lazy, but felt deserving of more. That's not depression. And then he had another tweet that was kind of like 99% uh, of so-called male depression is hiding from the lingering question. Am I doing enough? No. That's why you have sad feelings can't hide from ancestral DNA and blood memories. Your ancestors are shaking their damn heads and you feel it. Hence depression. Simple to fix. Yeah. It's like Do think, more, achieve more, try more things, right? Yeah. And like our ancestors for thousands of years got as far as they could and they got to like us, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever the current generation is. And then these people just become transgender and then they end their bloodline yeah i have netflix and then i'm transgender and i'm on reddit all the time and you so, cut your balls off so i cut my balls off that's the end of uh ten thousand more years of just and then it ends with just one line. person who just like wears makeup and like does you know acrylic nails dances gets invited to the white house and then that's it and then god had a plan for all these bloodlines where everyone keeps having kids and keeps going but then the devil tricks these transgenders into ending, like into cutting their own balls off yep. and sterilizing themselves. Yep. It's very sad. It's crazy. 
Um, let's move on to the trans man. Speaking so, of taking off balls. Yeah. So this girl became a trans man and then uh, got depressed because she realized how hard it is to be a guy. It's like not that sweet. Nobody told me how lonely being a man is. I had closer friendships with random women I met in the bathroom before I transitioned at clubs because of how open women are than I've had in my eight years of transitioning. Because women are just so much more vulnerable and deep than men. But to have known, and I think a lot of trans men feel this, is we knew what de depth felt like before we transitioned. We knew what it felt like to like have people want to hug us. And to have people want to talk to us. And to have a community. And then you transition and you're just a guy walking down the street that people cross the street so that they're not near you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, That's sad. It is sad. But it's like, yeah, being a guy is not that sweet. It ain't easy out here. Anything you want, you have to work for and get yourself. And even then, it's not easy. And then it's you compare yourself to other guys. It, it, it's very different than being a girl. Yeah, you're disposable. It's what have you done for me lately type shit, you know? Uh, there's no intrinsic value. It's all like... There's a lot what of things that are do. assumed too. Yeah. Like you're supposed to do that. You're supposed to do this. And you don't get uh, not a lot of appreciation for being a guy. Mm -hmm. And that's just what it is. But you think, oh, I want to be a guy. I'm going to grow my little beard and cut my boobs off. And I'll, I'll, I'll have all, a ton of new friends from all the guy activities. Start hanging out with the boys. It's do, like, you know how hard it is to hang out with us? Do you know how many new friends I've made in the last five years? Maybe zero. Maybe zero. Actually, you know, a couple. There's a couple. A couple. But there's a couple. But it's easy. It's not. They're hard to find. Guys. There's a guy, Rob Smith, in New Orleans. Yeah, and we're actually friends <laughs> with him. And we became friends with him almost as a joke because of uh, the other Rob Smith, and his name was Rob Smith too. But he actually is our friend. But it's very hard. It's like I meet people all the time, and I'm never gonna hang out with you. Yeah. Oh, hey, cool, man. Yeah, we should. We should chill. And it's like, you yeah, never do. I'll um, never hang out. And then I have really good friends from college who I see maybe once a year, you know, yeah. maybe once a year when you go home. It's not It's not like a big party out here um, yeah. for men. And then especially you transition and then what? You're five, six because you're a woman's height. Yep. So you're you're already like a little short, I guess. I don't then know. Then you're like trans, which is a little weird. And then you got those big eyes because you're a girl. Yeah. So I'm not trying to chill with you. So I don't know. You got a weird vibe from you. And then it's like a lot of guys value in their mind is like the type of women you can court and like who, you know, the woman you can interact with. And if you're a trans guy hanging out with women, it's like you're not going to, you know, get the, the star, the cheerleader or whatever. Yeah. Whatever you think you want. Yeah, you're but, gonna have to deal with like trans other trans people. Yeah, but that was very sad for Seth Dillon. I didn't think, I didn't even know that that was his backstory. I know, crazy. So it's like I'm not. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> was that an unnecessary shot? <laughs> no, no. I think it was funny. It looks like Seth Dillon. All right, that's allowed. Yeah. All right, let's yeah, move yeah. on. We got games. He's a he runs a satire site. He gets he, it. He gets it. Satire never sleeps. Um, the one do the trans guy on the dating app. I want to do the, well, sure. Eh, yeah. Do we have any real points for that? Um, trans people should date AI. Okay. That's what your point yeah, was? Yeah, that's my point. Uh, so we can, we, can just, we can just abbreviate, or what's it called? Yeah, let's skip the video. Basically, this guy does a skit. We'll show him for a little bit. Hey, you look really cute. Cheers. Thank you. Would you like to go out for drinks on Friday? Sounds good. Actually, before we meet up, I just want to let you know that I'm trans. Not that it's a big deal, but it's probably going to come up sooner or later. Wait, so not that it's a big deal. Be a woman? How about I fucking decide yeah. whether or not that's a big deal? It's actually the most important thing of this whole conversation. What are you talking about? It's um, the only thing I care about. He go, this little boy goes on to do a bit about like how it's hard to date as trans on dating apps. And it's like, yeah, you're, I don't, you're an imposter. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, it's not a big deal. Hey, um, hey, can you help me move next week? Uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. I drive a smart car. We'll get the couch in there. Yeah. So, well, no, we can't. That's actually huge information. It's the only thing I need. I, th I thought you had a pickup truck. Yeah. And I was thinking they should just date AI. You know how AI is like getting flirtatious now? Yeah. And it's like you can swap pics with AI. Oh, AI will tell you, oh, I don't mind. That's not a big deal. I think you're beautiful. Like there is an opportunity there. Yeah. 
yeah. get them into the metaverse. But man, that slipping in that, ah, oh, it's not a big deal, but you know, to who? What are you talking about? Gaslighting yeah. me in real time? Crazy. Let's move on to that 4chan post about how trans people ruin everything. Yeah, uh, trans. they post a trans flag. Ruins female sports. Ruins education. Ruins preschool. Ruins software jobs. Ruins movies. Ruins video games. Ruins modding scenes. Ruins tabletops RPGs. Ruins wargaming. Ruins political debates. Ruins universities and humanities. Ruins leftism. Thank you for that one. Uh, ruins creative writing, comic books, Silicon Valley, social media, medical industry, psychology, military. Somehow even ruins homosexuals. How did they do it? <laughs> well, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's one guy's take, you know? Yeah, and I kind of agree with it. Of course. But we just read it. We don't, you know, we didn't We don't that. condone that. We're just reading it. We you know? rewrite that. In a weird All right, well, that's the end of the cringe. The cake pop guy will do in bonus land. Okay. We're gonna that's a good one. We're going to talk about in bonus land how... These people need euphemisms to talk about the very disgusting and very invasive surgeries that they do. Yeah. And they need cute little ways to talk about it so you don't picture and visualize the man-made horrors that they're doing. So yep. sign up at FleckusTalks.com. We'll see you in Bonus Land, boys. Well, let's move on to Urban Decay. Um, yeah, let's move on to Urban Decay. The first one is the pregnant woman getting attacked. Yeah, was this new? I, I didn't see when this came from. I just saw it go. It went viral. It went viral this week, so and I've never seen it. Pregnant woman gets pulled by her hair. Has two little kids in the stroller. Young African American. Oh, punching her in the face, trying to steal from her, pulling her hair. And why does this happen? There's the criminal. Sounds like crying. So it makes you wonder why this happened. Yeah. Maybe, and then there was an article that came out that said a lot of uh, urban crime is because there's no gardens. Yeah, this uh, this man contends the presence of community gardens can reduce gun violence by up to 29%. So that's based on Philadelphia trying to do a $10 million buyback plan for some vacant lots uh, so that they could have community gardens for people. That way they don't shoot people for no reason. That way they don't target a pregnant woman with two kids in a stroller as their victim, you know? Because they're going to go, oh, look at that basil. I'm going to stop and smell the roses and not mm, commit a gun crime. That basil is fresh. I can use that in a caprese salad. Oh, yeah. very nice. <laughs> I'm like a crime? <laughs> Not for me anymore. There was also, I, I don't know if you saw this, there was like a, a, a con community worker and they, they had a shirt that said security. Instead yes, of security, yes, yes, yes. Security. And they're trained in de-escalation. Yeah. Meet security. A security group led by queer women. The group focuses on de-escalation and creating a welcoming environment. Uh, and they're a Minneapolis-based security team that is owned and operated by queer and POC women, women with an X in it. Our goal is to create and maintain safe spaces for everybody, especially the LGBTA community. Wow. I bet that works good. Yeah. I, I bet, you know, nobody's ever steamrolled a weak lesbian before. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was some secure security there to help that lady. Maybe she could de-escalate the situation. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. You don't want to attack a pregnant woman. That's not right. Yeah. Let's go to the Sprouts attack. Yeah. This is... Um, Reminder that if you hear the same repeating phrase again, the battle cries, as yeah. we've called it before, you are dealing with someone who's in the throes of mania, urban decay mania, let's call it, and mm. do not engage. That's the key, is the, the battle cry. So that's a real problem, is her battle cry. That's a real problem. That's a real fucking problem, bitch. That's a real problem. Put your hands on the female, that's a real problem. That's a real problem. That's the warning sign. That's how you know you're dealing with someone who's going to pop. Yeah. They're no longer thinking. They're just acting when they you hear that battle cry, that repeated battle yeah. cry. And it's just destruction. So It's yeah. already on at that point. This is Sprouts, which is a high-end grocery store. Yeah, ma'am, you're in a Sprouts. You're in Sprouts, and you're causing a scene throwing bottles. That's a real problem. Um, so, yeah. So next, let's do um, the – I think it's Chicago, I believe – yeah. where the cops get pushed back by protesters. So we're going to show that first, and then we're going to show you after the reason the cops were there in the first place. So if you saw this video, you'd think, man, the cops are really, uh, they must have done something, must have been really bad. Let's see what's going on. Looks like they're they're going past the tape. Looks like there's some crime scene tape. 
that woman has a two by four and she's like threatening to hit the cops with a piece of wood. The cops are trying to de-escalate. There's the two by four. Cause you know, as you do, you hit cops with a piece of wood, as you do. And it's like, oh, the community is really mad. Something really bad must have happened. The people, oh. you know. Put the two by four down. There must be some justification for this outrage. I wonder what it was. And let's see like the, the reason the cops were so mad. This is why the cops were on scene. And it's a slow video with no audio, so we can narrate it. You see a guy in the top left corner of the screen running away. Here comes a young man with a Draco and a ski mask. I have that gun. It doesn't look like a cop to me, does it? So he shoots that guy. He's shooting. That poor poor victim fell. So he's going to get executed now, as ha- as happens in Chicago. Another gunman pulls up, a masked man, and a third pulls up. And they're all firing shots into this uh, defenseless man on the ground. Yeah. I would, hey, if I was with my boys rolling up on that guy mm-hmm. and someone's behind me with the Glock, I'd be like, dog, get in front get of in me. Get in front of me with You're that Glock. You're just going to shoot me in the side of the head. You're going like this. Yeah. But so, yeah. So now we know that. So that makes sense now. You guys are following. That's why the neighborhood had to come out and threaten the cops with a two by four. Because the cops came to clear up that situation, but then they're oppressing the neighborhood. They're ruining the neighborhood by doing that. Yeah. Those cops shouldn't come. They, sh- they shouldn't have gone there. You just let the people you know? use the Dracos however they want. Yep. Um, all right, exactly. let's move on. The lady that had the babies in the milk crate. Yeah, we got a we got a Indiana mother sentenced to one year in prison after placing her twin babies in a milk crate during bike ride. Oh, uh, like that, it's a white woman. You can't, you can't Diversity higher. So that's not good. No, you, you cannot. You can't do that. If they hit a bump, you hit bumps and potholes and stuff, you're gonna break one of their legs. So she's a street rat. She got the babies in the milk crate. She got in trouble. And it's nice to have uh, white people in urban decay. Yeah. That way we don't get accused of anything. Yeah. Smart. You got to balance it out. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Um, The graduation, the kid graduated and his name has a number in it. The the three very on. The three three very on. The variant. The third. The third. The third. The variant. The three variant. The third variant. The three variant. Or it could just be a backwards. The Travion. The Travion. The Travion. The Travion. The Travion. The Travion. Which is an interesting name. Does that sound familiar to you? I think that's a biblical name. I was going to say, the Last Supper, there was, I believe, a De Three Varion there. Do we have a picture of that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> right next to Jesus, the Three Varion. There he is in the back. He's the 13th the disciple. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I forgot about him. I did, too. I didn't realize. And now you look at it, it kind of makes sense. Duh. That's De Three Varion. It's duh. It's De Three Varion, so it's a biblical name. I'm a big fan of these types of names. I know you are. It's like a running joke in my house, too. Yeah. We enjoy like when you hear a very unique name like that. Made up names. Yeah. So we have made up. In- like there's they're one of one. They're they're yeah. not on any other birth certificate in America, right? So I get squirts from that. It's funny to me. Uh, here in New Orleans, we've had two Uber Eats drivers named Sean Drekica and Sean Drekka, spelled differently. Mm-hmm. So those are funny to me. In college, I had pet rabbits, and I named them Lapostrophia, which is L apostrophe A. Hadashan, which is H dash A W N, and then lasagna, L A apostrophe Z O N I A. And that was funny to me. And we're allowed to make those jokes. That's a good bit. That's good, clean That's fun. Good, clean fun. Hurts we're nobody. To do yeah. Joe Biden voice. Yeah. And, and, and to be fair, my name is spelled a little goofy too. Yeah. Austin like Jane, not like Texas. It's the same thing. We both have, everyone's got stupid names. Yeah. It's all the same. I got a stupid name, too. So I got a biblical name, boys and girls. Yeah. All right, let's move on to page two of Urban Decay. Richard. <laughs> Richard. Um, the the drunk girl who says the N-word? Yeah. So, I mean, we, all, we often talk about racism and, you know, so who's the real racists out there, right? We got to expose some of them every once in a while, right? Yeah. Like, who, like, there's, we hear about racism all the time. Who are the people holding society back and who are these horrible racists? We found two of them. The first is this girl. All right, guys. So today in Skits World, some random girl came to Six Donuts and started taking a piss in front of the store. What the fuck? You're the best Who's that? Is that your friend? Whoa. Get, get 
punches her right in the face. I get that a little bit. Through her phone. All right, we've seen enough. We, we you get it, right? So that's that's who's holding everyone back. She's at the absolute tip of the pyramid of racism, and she it's a blacked out girl pissing on the ground. She's at the top of the power structure. That's who makes all the decision decisions. She runs. I think she runs the Federal Reserve. <laughs> yeah. That's who makes it so no one can buy a house. That, exactly. That's who ruins everyone's credit score. Exactly. That <laughs> drunk girl who is pissing on the ground outside the donut shop. With a smashed phone who's the most blacked out person you've ever seen. Who likely mixed pills with the alcohol. Yeah. She's the tip of the spear for racism. Once so yeah. we get her in jail or whatever or out of the country. Racial harmony. Then black people can start, you know, getting F back. You can finally relax everybody. So yeah, we're going to try to find who out, who she is. Try to take care of that. Yeah. Get her out. That's who's holding everyone back. The, yeah. The, the 1 a.m. drunk piss girl. And that's actually, she's just one piece of it. Yeah. Because there's another. That, that's the queen of, I guess, racism. And then here's the. We king. have the king. We yep. have the king. Here he is. Would you consider yourself racist? Before you answer that, there was so much comments that said, he's not racist, he just likes things his way. Oh yeah, I saw them. Depends on how you define racist, and it redefines itself every minute. Are you in the KKK? Uh, I'm not a traditional Klansman. Are you associated? Oh yeah. Do you consider the KKK a racist organization? Uh, not Depends on the organization. There is no national organization anymore. What's your favorite racial slur? What one would you like me to use for you? <laughs> when was the last time you said the N-word? Oh, it's been days. <laughs> Do you feel disappointed that Harrison is considered the most racist town when y'all are so passionate about it like do you are you mad at harrison that's from the old days when they actually had a sundown law and zinc denton because zinc didn't need one if they made it through harrison after midnight they, oh <laughs> that was badass for the people who don't know what is the sundown town uh sundown town is an area that hosts a law no blacks after sundown and they did that for a reason what is the reason yeah, I thought you were familiar with the hood. Be carrying on more after sundown. They'd be okay. robbing and looting. Matter of fact, look up Walmart being uh, diversified by blacks. You'll find plenty of giants. Oh my God. <laughs> You've been around the hood before though, right? Yeah, didn't much like it. <laughs> like, Matter of fact, you want to know why many black people move to a white area? To get away from blacks. Hey, you now, know how blacks are in the hood. They want to get the hell out of the hood. All right, so that's the... The peak of racism on the on the male side. Mm -hmm. That's who's holding everyone back as well. The guy you had to go 500 miles in the woods to find. Yeah. The guy you had to drive to in that notorious racist town who's comfortable on camera with a black guy. Yeah. Basically doing bits. Basically doing bits. So that's the other that's half of That's who's it. keeping everyone down and not letting everyone, anyone get promotions. And then both of these people, I'm, I'm sure, are killing people with guns and looting businesses they and must be and attacking pregnant women they must be they right? must be because that's racism is the worst thing ever and that's yeah. probably what they're doing right yeah has to be so there well, you I'm have glad it. we found them and I we track them down and once we get those guys out you know we're pretty much solved it's yeah. pretty much over exactly all right let's move on our last piece of urban decay the pigeons being eaten in nyc oh no plucking just straight pigeons on the open charcoal grill just straight Bird on fire. Yeah. Oh, the feathers, they'll burn off. We'll scrape it off later. Look at that. Jeez. See, this... Snip off the legs. The, the That stuff, the yellow inside uh, stuff is disgusting. Uh. But Richard Rapoy told me it doesn't look that bad. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you pluck the bird. Have some decency. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's a it's, it's a, a songbird or whatever, it's right? It's a Cornish game hen, game hen, basically. Yeah, right? it's basically a game. You can eat pigeons, you know? So Richard Rapway isn't anti-pigeon. I'm not either. I just don't like how they got there. That was very third world-ish. And yeah. we're going to combine, basically. like Squab is an immature domestic pigeon, typically under four weeks old. Does that mean you eat it? Yeah. I mean, white people do some crazy shit with uh, with pigeons. Birds. So and then, well, and birds they they have the uh, what's the thing where you eat the whole head of the bird? Oh, uh, I done that one. You deep fry it and you eat the whole head of the bird. I what did that once that? in uh, New York, and I got uh, salmonella, but I won a thousand dollars, and then I risked five hundred of it on a coin flip, and I lost. Okay, is that nice. my old job? Yeah, Ortolan. 
or Ortolan, I think. Yeah, it's called. it was disgusting. And then I bit the head of the bird, and then this black gunk shot on my shirt, and it stained my work shirt. And I brought it to the dry cleaners, and they tried like ten times, and they're like, "I've never seen this stain. I can't get it out." <laughs> um, so yeah, in New York, they're cooking the birds up like that. And in New York, pigeons. There's some culture there. Yeah, which is going to be the first clip of uplifting gold, which we are now into. We are now into uplifting gold. And this is the other side, kind of the which way Western man. This is the other side of pigeonry. Look at this clip. Do you ever walk past a store and think, how do they make enough money to stay open? My name is Michael Scott, and I sell pigeons in New York City. All right, f***ers, let's go. I came to Michael's store to learn how he keeps this business open. We started on the roof where he has a coop of 600 pigeons. Let me guess. This part, I could probably get 150, 200 dollars. You know, I've read 500 this year so far. Pigeon supplies right now is probably 50, 50, 50. Whereas, you know, for the first like 15 years, it was 100%. As pigeon sales fell, the store expanded to sell other pet products and even started renting out their pigeons for releases at weddings and funerals. I charge them a fee. They take the birds to the cemetery, they let them go, and they fly right back. So there's not really a lot of competition because it's not really a big market like there used to be 20 or 30 years ago. While Americans have lost interest in pigeons, Belgian pigeon racing is still somewhat popular. That's good. With winning birds. So basically, the only way the business can exist, it says later in the video, is because the guy owns the building and doesn't have to pay rent. <laughs> yeah. He's grandfathered in, basically. He's grandfathered in. And basically, once that business is done or that guy dies or that guy leaves and moves on, then the only pigeon culture in New York is going to be the people eating the birds. It's going to move on from people raising the birds yeah. to people eating the birds because they're from Somalia or whatever. Yeah. So which way, Western man? You yeah. Know? Pigeon racing, releasing doves at a funeral, and then they fly back, or eating them, grilling them with the feathers on? Yeah. Which way? Which way? We're still in Uplifting Gold. We're in Uplifting Gold now. We're towards the end of the show. Let's uh, do kids being taught the, the shield formations. This is good. This is better than anything else they're being taught in school. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll take that all day. Small arm tactics, right? <laughs> Let's go. That's the phalanx, is that what that's called or whatever? Yeah. Roman? Yeah. I don't know. I'm, it's way better than all the other trans shit. Yep. Um, let's do the kid who reads the book and drinks tea. And what does it say? If you wonder... If you ever wondered how our six-year-old starts his day, it's with drinking tea and reading a chapter book after he finishes cereal at 6.30 a.m. There you go. Not He's an old soul. Is, yeah. He's an old soul. I don't know. Not everything is depressing. Not everything's ruined. Not everything's trans. Not everything is urban decay. Yeah, and even the kids are fighting back, even. Yeah. You know? This is starting to feel good. This is starting to look up. The tide is turning a little bit, it feels yeah. like. you know, The pendulum swung. Got to that dead distance of so far away, that and peak. then and now it's coming back and it's accelerating back. Yeah. Oh man! All right, let's go on to the girl at the drive. -thru. What was that? I have to eat an egg every hour. The girl at the drive-through. <laughs> Most people um, are good and normal. You have to eat an egg every hour. Yeah. I need energy. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. The what? Man at the drive thru? Yeah. The girl at the drive thru. All right, man. <laughs> All right. So tell me what just happened. The people in the back of um, the car, right behind you, said that you're a Trump supporter and just to let us know. So they warn you yes. that the car in front of them, which is me, yes. is a Trump supporter. Yes. And what do they think you were supposed to do with that information? I don't know, treat you differently. Spitting your food. Wow. But that's crazy. Wow, how that is. society is now. Do you see how Democrats are and liberals? Yeah. They're so mean. That's good. They're trying to get me And isn't that service. nice that she realizes she's just like a normal, she's like a young girl who works at the drive through and McDuck, Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, as long as you're not a blue-haired Muppet, yeah. everyone is pretty much chill. The demons in the car behind were hoping that a demon was operating the drive through yeah. too. 
So then the plan of spitting in your coffee or fucking up your shit would have gone through. Things. Yeah. But as so long, the demons yeah. are trying to communicate, right? Exactly. And like, as long as the person working at that place is in a blue haired Muppet too, it doesn't, it just doesn't go, it doesn't go past B, A, B, dead. And do you know what I would do? Uh, remember when we were joking about that uh, bald black woman with a mask talking about how important it is for trans kids to mm-hmm, be affirmed? Mm-hmm. If that woman pulled up and I was a drive through worker, you know what I'd do? I'd hand her her coffee and say, have a nice day. Yeah. These people are so twisted. They want to like make everything an issue. It's and, so true. And they want the demon to transfer and they want to they want to get one up on you and they want to beat you. And so yeah. your enemies your enemies hate you. They want you reminder, to, they you know? want to make you the worst version of yourself. Exactly. And that's such a good point. I would never treat someone differently because of their political views. I wouldn't like spit in their food or sabotage whatever. Of course not. I might roast them a little bit on a podcast with my boys. Yeah. Having fun with the audience. But they they want they're miserable and they want everyone to be miserable too and then they'll point to that and go look how bad they are that's that's what we're up against and yep. then that'll justify their bad behavior it's like a downward satanic cycle it's a spiral that you need to avoid yep um, all right let's go to the based weird white kid who does the little street interview yeah sure people are just walking in front of it like we're not recording. It happens. People are people. None of it's intentional. Never attribute to malice what can be attributed to incompetence. It's far more likely that they're all in their own worlds, doing their own thing. They're not paying attention to the world around them. And we all do it every day, whether you're driving, walking down the street. All of our lives are just as complex as everybody else's. Everything you have going on, they have going on. Nobody knows what everybody else is going through. We also need to be a little more self-aware and aware of the world around us. That was deep. You got to look deep to find the deep things. <laughs> that is, and that's, that's basically the theme of the whole episode is if you think the world's against you, anywhere you look, you'll find evidence that it is. Oh, yeah. If you, and then you become a loser because you don't succeed because you go, oh, I didn't succeed because uh, this person's racist. Or I, I didn't blame su- it on this. And I didn't get the promotion because my boss is sexist or I didn't get this because of that. And then you would give excuses for your failures. But if you have a winner's attitude – you won't take those roadblocks as permanent ends to your mission. You'll just keep doing whatever it takes to win and eventually win. And it's just a matter of how hard it's going to be to win. And that's like the big difference. And that's why the people with the victim mindset, the progressive left, they can't succeed. And they look around and go, oh, I'm not succeeding. And it's because I'm outraged about all these things that have held me back. And they have all this evidence, which is just like, what, the the ring cam where the it said the fake N-word? Yep. Or, you know, there's all these like blacked out white girl who pissed (laughs) said the N word a bunch of times on pills, probably. So it's like all the evidence is just an excuse that you're making to not do what you should be doing. Yeah. And that's like the progressive ideology. And that's why growing up, my parents, especially my dad, taught me to win. You're a winner. You win. If you lose, you learn and you go back until you win. And I didn't, I wasn't, you know, a person who was like accepting failure or made excuses. Oh, I don't want to play anymore. That coach doesn't like me. That never went down in my house. Yeah. So that's the difference. Um, And also shout out to Father's Day. Shout out to our dads. Yep. We both have dads named Steve. Yes, we do. That's pretty good. Shout out to big Steve. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for everything you taught me. I use it every day. Smart. And also another thing that we learned in the Fleckus household, uh, sense of urgency. We also. We little hustle. hustle. Hustle and like hustle, sense of urgency, play to the whistle. And that's, play through the whistle. Yeah, say. exactly. So we made some, uh, we had some savage kids with those lessons. All right, last one. The guy who asks his uh, father-in-law to marry the daughter. This was a nice Father's Day clip to end on. I promised Talia that I would film. Yeah. And um, yeah. I love, just want to say I love her with all my heart. Oh, that's beautiful. And I love your family. And uh, yeah, I'd just love to be a part of your family for what the rest saying? of our lives. <laughs> and um, yeah, I got myself a ring. And um, yeah, I would love your blessing to marry her. <laughs> you got more than my blessing. <laughs> thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Been waiting for this for so long. Oh, uh, I love her to death. Isn't that so nice? That is nice. And it's a nice tradition. You ask the father of your girlfriend to marry. That's nice. And you get the blessing. Isn't that great? Yep. That's uplifting. Happy yep. Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Motherfuckers talks in the books. 
Thank you guys for watching. We are going to end this episode as we always do by highlighting a patriotic business that we should be supporting, especially now when everyone wants to become transgender or hate our guts or sell us gay beer. This is going to be different. We are shouting out a guy who is a veteran, went overseas, got a little banged up, came back. He's in the workforce now. He started his own pool cleaning company. Yep. It's called Easy Clean Pools, uh, easycleanpools.net. I think he wants Google reviews, though. His name is Evan. Well, um, yeah. Let's leave some Google reviews, some really good ones for Evan. If we get enough and he can get this business going, he can make it his full-time career, yeah. which would be great to set him up. And it's in where? Uh, Fort Myers, Fort Florida. Myers. So if you have a pool in Fort Myers. Guys, I know there's people watching that are in the Fort Myers, Naples area that have a pool and probably just some pool guy that came with the house. Mm -hmm. Let's swap it out. Let's give the work to Evan. Let's get him a full schedule of pools to clean and fix in Southwest Florida. Yeah, and he loves the show and has followed since the beginning. And this was his girlfriend, or uh, is it his, his wife? I think his girlfriend, yeah. His, his girlfriend. girlfriend reached out on, reached on his out. behalf. So, so Evan. Yeah, if you're in that area, you need a new pool guy, let's get Evan some work. And then also we have the links in the description of the episode. Let's leave some Google reviews and let's leave whatever, whatever else is in there. We'll do another call to action, maybe followers or Google reviews or business in general. Google review, I think, is what it is. Let's what make it happen. Helps. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. We will see you at the next one. If you are still watching at this point, join us in bonus land. Bonus Land is dropping right now. We're doing an extra 30 minutes of the show. We have a lot of fun topics. FleckusTalks.com is the website. Sign up today. Let's get into Bonus Land. You're going to love it. If you like the show and you're still watching, you love an extra 30 minutes of it. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.